Hi, this is Dr. Basil Mantari. I'm going to give the lecture on the histology of the mammary glands. Even if the mammary glands are not strictly a part of the reproductive tract, these are important accessory glands to nourish offsprings. This lecture will deal with the development and histology of the mammary glands on its three physiologic states resting, active, and lactating mammary gland. The mammary duct system will be described. A brief discussion on the components of breast milk, its secretion, and comparison from cow's milk will be given. Mammary glands located in the anterior chest wall are exocrine glands that produce milk for the sustenance of the young. These are compound tubuloalveolar glands. Histologic picture varies with sex, age, and physiologic status of the female. The female mammary glands reach its greatest development at age 20. Atrophic changes begin at 40 years and become marked after menopause. It undergoes slight changes in size in each menstrual cycle. Its most striking change in size and functional activity occur during pregnancy and lactation. The mammary gland consists of 15 to 25 lobes each of the compound tubuloalveolar type, separated by dense connective tissue and adipose tissue. The variation in breast size among women is related to the adipose tissue volume rather than the epithelial or ductal component. Each lobe has its own excretory duct, the lactiferous duct, which opens independently in the nipple. This is the areola a darkly pigmented area around the nipple. The widening of the lactiferous duct in this area is called the lactiferous sinus. This is a lobe of a mammary gland. There are about 15 to 25 lobes, each lobe having its own excretory duct, the lactiferous duct. Each lobe of the mammary gland has lobules, which consist of alveoli, or acini. Intralobular loose connective tissue surround each acini or alveoli. A denser, more collagenous interlobular connective tissue surrounds the larger ducts and the lobules. Milk is secreted by epithelial cells lining the alveoli and excreted out into the intralobular ducts and into the interlobular ducts that continues as the lactiferous duct opening up into the nipple. There are three physiologic or functional states in the mammary gland of females that results in striking changes histologically and physiologically. These are the resting mammary gland, active mammary gland, and the lactating mammary gland. The resting mammary gland is the mammary gland at birth and till before pregnancy. At birth, the mammary gland is devoid of acini, consisting only of short branching ducts. As puberty approaches, the rising levels of ovarian hormones stimulate growth and branching of the mammary gland, and small masses of epithelial cells are formed at the ends of the smallest branches. In the adult, cyclic changes in the glandular tissue are minimal and the slight increase of breast size and sense of fullness experienced by some women at mid-cycle is due to increasing blood flow and edema of the connective tissue. Since the breast tissue is typically less nodular, meaning lobules are smaller at days 8 to 14, this may be the optimal time to do a breast examination or a mammogram. This is a scanning histologic image of a resting breast. When viewed on higher magnification, the ducts can be identified surrounded by dense connective tissue. Enlargement of the lactiferous duct will show the simple cuboidal epithelium of the duct. The active mammary gland is seen during pregnancy. The elevated levels of estrogen and progesterone results in a rapid increase in length and branching of the duct system, concomitant with a decrease in the adipose and connective tissue surrounding the lobules. Prolactin promotes the growth of mammary alveoli, but actual milk production, which is stimulated by prolactin, is inhibited by the estrogenic and progesterone-rich hormonal environment. 
there is an expansion of pre-existing spherical masses of cells, development of lumen, and their differentiation into an asini. This is a histologic specimen of an active mammary gland. Note that there is proliferation of the ductal system, but the connective tissue pointed by the black arrows has decreased in amount. A higher magnification of this specimen shows an increase in plasma cells, lymphocytes, and eosinophils surrounding the ducts. Myoepithelial cells surround the acini and ducts. They are stellate-shaped and form a basket-like network around the acini and are arranged with its long axis parallel to the ducts it surrounds. These cells are located between the basement membrane and the epithelial cells lining the alveoli. It is important during lactation because stimulation of the nipple by a suckling baby results to release of oxytocin from the pituitary gland, leading to contraction of the myoepithelial cells, constricting the acini and expressing milk from its lumen into the duct system. Due to its location between the luminal cells and the extracellular matrix, it plays a role in the exchange of information between these two structures, thereby regulating growth and morphogenesis of the mammary gland. These cells are suppressors of breast cancer by inhibiting the growth of tumors and limiting mobility of cancer cells, therefore preventing invasive cancers. In a lactating mammary gland or mammary glands of a breastfeeding mother, increase in alveoli is noted. The alveoli are filled with milk secretion and lined by cuboidal active secretory cells. The connective tissue is greatly reduced into thin strips. This is a slide showing a lactating mammary gland. The appearance of different regions varies considerably, suggesting that not all areas are in the same functional state at the same time. In some areas, the secretory portion has a wide lumen lined with flattened cells. In other areas, the alveoli may have a smaller lumen with cuboidal lining cells. Milk is seen as a eosinophilic material in the lumen. The interlobular connective tissue is thinned out. This is a higher magnification of the alveoli lined by cuboidal secretory cells. Milk is identified as the eosinophilic material in the lumen of the alveoli. This three histologic specimen shows the difference of a resting, pregnant, and lactating mammary gland. From resting to lactating mammary gland, there is a gradual increase in the branching complexity of the mammary ducts and development of the secretory alveoli starting in the active mammary gland. Note also that the connective tissue and adipose content decrease from resting to lactating. More secretions of milk are present in the alveoli of the lactating mammary gland. Breast milk is more than 80% water. Lactose is the primary carbohydrate found in human milk and accounts for 40% of the total calories provided by breast milk. Lactose plays a role in promoting healthy gut bacteria, insulin regulation, and the growth of gut antimicrobial factors. Fat in human milk is essential for brain development, absorption of fat-soluble vitamins, and is a primary caloric source. Human milk has two types of proteins, 60% whey and 40% casein. This proportion is important to allow quick and easy digestion. Immunoglobulin is another important protein component to protect infants from bacterial and viral infections. Colostrum is the first milk produced in the first few days of an infant's life and has high levels of protein, minerals, and immunoglobulins that provide passive immunity for the baby. The carbohydrate protein and fat content of milk from one species is meant to meet the nutritional requirements of that particular species, whether human, cow, or dog. The protein content in cow's milk is more than double than that of human milk. This is because the amount of protein in milk is linked to the amount of time it takes for that particular species to grow in size. The human infant has the slowest growth rate, doubling its birth weight only after 180 days as compared to cow 
that doubles its birth weight after 40 days. Humans need less protein and more fat as their energies are expended primarily in the development of the brain, spinal cord, and nerves. A higher content of whey protein in human milk makes it easier for babies to digest. Kaskasein has been linked to a range of diseases and allergies. For fat, although the values are relatively close for human and cow's milk, the type of fat varies. Cow's milk contains more saturated fat, while human milk contains more unsaturated fat. Higher levels of unsaturated fatty acids in human milk is needed for brain development, which cow's milk does not provide. Calcium content in cow's milk is nearly four times that of human milk. Higher calcium is needed in calves since the calves grow more quickly than humans and have a larger skeleton. Even if human milk contains less calcium, it is easily and better absorbed than that found in cow's milk. Cow's milk contains little iron, which is why it is unsuitable for infants under the age of 12 months. Cow's milk is also low in vitamin C, D, and A. The immune kidneys of the infant will have difficulty in excreting out the high protein load of cow's milk. It also increases the risk of dehydration. Allergic reaction to proteins in cow's milk are also more common. How are the components of breast milk secreted? Triacylglycerols are synthesized in the rough endoplasmic reticulum. The newly synthesized lipids aggregate into droplets and release into the cytoplasm. These droplets fuse to form larger cytoplasmic lipid droplets during their transport to the apex of the cell. The droplets become relatively large before secretion. It buds off from the cell together with a part of the plasma lemma. This is called the apocrine type of secretion. For carbohydrate and protein, these substances accumulate in the Golgi-derived secretory vesicles. These vesicles are transported to the apex of the cell. The vesicle membrane fuses with the apical plasma membrane and the contents are discharged. This is the merocrine type of secretion. This figure shows the development of the female breast and mammary glands in the different stages in a woman's life starting from infancy, before puberty, after puberty, pregnancy, and lactation. A menopausal breast reverts back to the pre-pubertal stage of development. During menopause, due to the gradual decrease of estrogen and progesterone leading to its absence with increasing age, the breast connective tissue becomes dehydrated and is no longer elastic. The breast shrinks and loses shape, leading to sagging of the breast. Glandular tissues also gradually decrease as the woman gets older. Lactational amenorrhea method, or LAM, is a temporary family planning method to help support both breastfeeding and family planning use. It is effective for up to six months after childbirth. It requires three conditions. First, the baby is fully or nearly breastfed and is fed often day and night. Second, the infant must be less than six months old. And lastly, the mother's monthly bleeding has not returned. What is the mechanism of action for lamb? When an infant breastfeeds, the stimulation of the nipple by sucking sends neural signals to the mother's hypothalamus, which responds by a decrease in gonadotrophic releasing hormones. Pituitary glands will not be stimulated, resulting to absence of secretion of pituitary hormones, primarily follicle-stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone. Without the pituitary hormones needed to stimulate ovarian follicle growth, the ovaries do not ovulate, resulting to amenorrhea. Weaning, or the process of stopping breastfeeding, results to absence of stimulation of the breast, leading to loss of prolactin and no milk production. Breast tissue will start to involute 
with alveoli degenerating and cells will be sloughed off and removed by macrophage. Size of breast reverts back to the pre-pregnancy state. Male and female mammary glands develop similarly from birth to puberty, but the growth of mammary glands in males is inhibited by increasing testosterone levels, which acts on the mesenchymal cells of the mammary stroma to induce regression and necrosis. Breast cancer is the most common cancer in females, although it can also occur in males. 90% arise in the ductal epithelium with invasive ductal carcinoma, the most common breast cancer. The development of the female breast is complex. There is rapid anatomic development at puberty and completion of differentiation during pregnancy and lactation, followed by a slow gradual glandular involution. This involution accelerates during menopause. Components of breast milk, its secretion, and comparison with cow's milk were discussed to emphasize the importance of breastfeeding over bottle feeding.